Is this loud enough back there, first of all? Is it good? I just got to remember not to fade away. <laughs> all right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you all for coming here today. Uh, this is kind of new to me because uh, for the last little while, I haven't done any live presentations. Most of my stuff has been through Teams meetings where everybody's got their camera off. So my idea of a person now represents a circle and some letters on it. So it's, it's nice to have you here today, and I'm happy to have this opportunity to present on the subject of the reality of data and the importance of business context, basically for anybody who uses data. Now, this second line might say, well, this kind of sounds like common sense that anybody in a business should understand the business, and I hope it is, but for today's presentation, what I want to do is zoom in on the people who are on the ground, fingers on keys, working with data. Now, before I get it, before I get into the heart of the presentation, I want to talk to you about a little bit like what motivated me to create this presentation. So as was mentioned, I got a lot of experience with all kinds of uh, databases and been on many projects over the years. I've been a consultant for 20 plus years. So I've observed a lot of things and I've experienced a lot of things. And one of the things that I found out is that business context will change the dynamic between the people who are working on the projects and the lack of business context especially. And it also affects the way that people treat the data. So what I want to do today is uh, introduce you to the concepts of the business process, how it improves communication, will help you improve the quality of your deliverables, and fundamentally, it's going to act as a foundation to any, any data platform. So with that, here's how I plan on doing, going ahead with this. So the first thing I want to do is talk about well, what is data and how does it uh, relate to reality. And I also want to stress the importance of context with respect to data. This might get you off of terra firma for a little bit, so I'm going to try and bring you back down to the ground with the second point, which is business processes and providing business context to your data. Now, I've got a few examples there. I want, I'm going to, to demonstrate the process and the definition I'd like to show you. And then I want to bring all of that into the third one, which is here are the data roles and why is the business context important to these roles? Okay, so I have examples there. And finally, I want to leave you with a lasting thought. So when you go away today, you're going to be thinking, yeah, maybe I could do that a little bit better. Okay? So with that, let's get on to the show with what is data? Well, first and foremost, data is fundamentally abstract. It's an abstraction of the reality that it came from. Now, if you think about reality, there's a lot of detail going. If you think about like, an example that I pulled from the internet was that apparently on the head of the pin, there's 5 billion hydrogen atoms that can fit on. So that's a whole lot of detail that we have no means of capturing. So what we have to do is resort to a simplification of reality or an abstraction. Okay? Second is data, unfortunately, is not perfect. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. But as anybody who's used data for uh, a while now, You'll know not to take data at face value when you receive it. You've got to look at it. You've got to figure out what it is that it's telling me, what, what are the imperfections in the data. There can be imperfections brought in by the things that are measuring uh, things out in the field. They need to be calibrated, and sometimes they can, be, they can get off calibration. Okay, so then you're going to get incorrect measurements. The second one, well, this one goes without saying, if there's any human interactions, like somebody manually entering data, or they manually process data, they can inter introduce human error. Okay? The third point I want to make is that anything textual in your data is based on a language, like English, French, Spanish, what have you. And as anybody who's studied languages understands, languages have their own idiosyncrasies. And we can call different things with the same name or the same thing with different names. I think that's kind of confusing. And then we're moving on. Data is not complete. And the really strong example I have that, as far as I know, reality is continuous. But data is like little snapshots in time. So we don't have data to represent all of the things that happen. So that's the incompleteness part. And now we're getting into the crux of the matter in that <clears throat> without context, your data has no meaning. If I throw out the number 47 to you, I haven't told you anything. 
It's just a number at that point. But if I told you it's 47 kilograms, oh, we're getting somewhere. We have a unit of measure. But we still don't know 47 kilograms of what. So you need to know what, ha what are we measuring, where do we measure it, when do we measure, and get you some context so that your data now means something. Okay? Um, now, before I get into the business context, I want to leave you with one more thing about data, and that there's, there's power to data. Now, obviously, despite all these shortcomings, we've done some pretty awesome things with data. But there's two sides to this coin, because if you take data out of context, you can do bad things with data, and we've seen that in the news. So what I want to do is uh, make you understand that with great power comes great responsibility, so I'd like you to use your data responsibly in the proper context that it came from. And with that, I would like to introduce to you the business process. So before I get into the definition, I just want to remind you, your data in your business came from some, somewhere out in the, in the real world where we have business activities. These activities are structured. They're not just random things that I hope that your business is on a whim and just kind of do things willy-nilly. They're structured to them. Um, now these uh, activities re can happen at random, but the activities themselves have structure. Okay? So it's these structured activities that I'm going to wrap the concept of the business process around. Now, one thing that I found is when I, when I go to different places and I ask people, what do you call a, a business process? I get different answers. And sometimes they oversimplify and say it's just activities that a business does. Kind of vague. So what I would like to do is give you a definition that has worked for me so that when I go back to like, my work, this, these are things that I like to ask or to find out about uh, the context so I know what the data means. So for me, the, de the definition of a business process is just that it's a series of related activities that generate something of value for an internal or external customer. These activities are repeatable, and we know when they, what starts the, the process, and we know what ends the process. So if I go back to the start again, well, what do I mean by related activities? If you have a process where this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and you take out one of those activities, your business process either starts to get really shaky or it just fails completely. Okay, so there's a relationship from one activity to the next. The next thing is the value. If you don't know what the value of your process is, stop doing it. <laughs> because there's, that's a, it's a waste of time. Like, who are you doing this for? What, what's the point? So I want to emphasize this because I, I've asked people, like, well, what's the value of doing this? And they couldn't answer it. Well, that's a bit of a problem. Um, now, the value is relative to a customer. So somebody wants the output of your activities. And the in, if it's within your organization, we'll call that an internal customer. And if it's somebody like you and I walking into a store, that's what we call an external customer. Okay? But there's something of value that the customer wants. And then repeatable, well, we have this idea of repeatability that we can do these activities over and over again. Like we said, these are structured. So although, like, um, I won't get to that in a second, but uh, we have this repeatability that we can record the data uh, on a regular basis, nice and neat, same attributes every time. And then finally, the well-defined start and end. Well, if you don't know where your processes start and end, I mean, they could go on forever. So you should be able to say, well, this, when this activity starts, it's game on, the process begins, we do some things, we create some value, and then this happens, it's off. And then we do it again. Okay, so that's my idea of a business process. And the last thing I'm going to mention about this is that even though the activities themselves are structured and we do the same things over and over, the actors involved in those activities can change. Like I'm going to show you an example where you can have a series change in actors doing the things, and that's going to affect the ranges of acceptable values in your data. Okay? So, I can just get a little bit of a drink. Okay, so before, I'm going to introduce you to a, a business process that's involved in the mining space. So, open air mining. And before I show you that, I just want to throw this up there, because if you've never been 
in the in the mining business, you're gonna get some data and you say, well, what's empty travel distance? What's queue time? What's spot time? These are things you'll find in the data, but you have no context yet. So with that in mind, here's the simplified version of the process. This is not a complete business process, but it's just to get you familiar with it in case you haven't seen it before. Because the idea of an open air mine is like we're taking material from one end and we're delivering it to somewhere else in the mine, either to be processed or to be used to maintain the mine. So here we have this concept of an empty truck. It's got to drive to a load location. At that load location, we have a, what we call an excavator or a shovel, and that's going to load the truck with material. By the way, that's the thing of value here. And then the truck's got to drive to a dump location where it can finally drop off the material. But like I say, this is not, according to the definition, this is not a complete process. And I've given you a little hint with the two little nibs at the top. What starts the process? What ends the process? What other things can happen in between? So here's a more complete picture. Now we know what starts the business process. So at the very top, we have an assignment. That means somebody has told the truck, you need to go to this little location specifically. And then it's game on. Then we have, they, the truck has a reason for being, it knows where it's going. But before it gets to the loading process, first it has to arrive at that load, load location, it has to queue if there's other things in front of it, and then it has to actually get in position. So there's this idea of spotting. So if you think back, remember I told you about empty travel distance? Well, that's between where the truck was at assignment and when it arrived, not where it was loaded. So now we have some context there. And the other one was spotting time. Spotting time was new to me. What, what is spotting? Well, that's just when the, the, the truck backs into position next to the, next to the shop. Okay. So we do the arrival queue spotting, we have, and then we have another assignment where the truck has to go to the dump area. Now you notice you have two assignments here. One starts the process, but the other one does not. If you try to start the second assignment without doing the loading, you have no reason to assign it to a dump location. So this assignment here is showing you the related activities aspect, where if you took the things before it, you break the process. Okay. Uh, so then we still have the loaded section, then we arrive to spot similarly at the dumping end. Then the truck drops, drops the material, and it's only when the truck bed comes back to level and is now back to an empty state that we can do the, do the cycle again. Okay. So this is the, the, a simple example of a business process. that uh, I use this a lot in my work, and once I saw this picture, it didn't make sense. All right, now what I want to do is bring you over to the data roles and see how all of this information is going to help with those. So here are a few roles that I, could, I wrote down. This is not a complete list. Uh, I would like to go through these in very great detail right now. I'm just kidding. Now, we, we don't obviously don't have time to go through these, so I picked a few of them. I'm not going to go into detail, but I could talk about any one of these and tell you why subject or business context is important. So the first one I'm going to do is the data analyst. Now if you think about what the job of a data analyst does, well, they're analyzing data. And analysis is all about we're evaluating something. What's the outcome or what was, what was the performance like for a particular situation? Now if everything's good, keep on keeping on. Don't need to do anything. But if things start to go mm, not so good, we need to change something. But where is that change going to happen? Back in the real world. So this is where the analyst, you can't just say, well, I think we need to change something, but I don't know where. So you have to be cognizant of these changes that you're going to recommend, they're going to go back to reality. And then the next thing is that if you want to change something without knowing how things are connected in the activities, you might say, well, this is a problem, so I want to change this one thing. And then you change it and you find out you have side effects. Well, that affected the next thing down the line. Like if I found my queue time was, was off in the, in the shovel example, then 
you might say, well, we've got to change the ordering or the, the lineups for the, um, for the queuing, make this lineup shorter. Well, now you've just affected spotting. And the other thing is that queue time, well, maybe that's just a symptom. Maybe it's the assignment people that have to figure out how to better disperse these trucks to different locations. Okay. So uh, then in order to generate your conclusions, we have to know what is the data that we're bringing in. And, and after we chew it and, and analyze it, well, the output, what is it? Well, uh, does it make sense? So if you're, like I said earlier, if you take data at face value when you first got it, you'd be like, mm, that's a risky proposition. You should know what the data means. And you should know if the values that are coming in are proper for the types of actors that are involved. Okay? So we gotta understand the business context to, to permit better judgment. And if you have no business context as a data analyst, I'm gonna say your abilities to interpret the data are going to be narrow. You're going to be limited. Okay? And even worse, you might end up generating some, clu some conclusions that are just wrong. So the business context from a data analyst perspective is kind of important. So that's not what I want to talk about from a data analyst perspective, but if, in order for the analyst to do their work, well, they need to get their data from somewhere. And before the, the data even arrives, we need to have a data structure. And for that, we have data models. So the data monitor's job, what are they doing? Well, they're structuring data for a purpose. And when you're talking about data projects, the whole purpose is to make analytics easier. Okay? So if you're doing uh, this kind of modeling, you might be familiar with the Kimball methodology, aka dimensional modeling. And the first step of the methodology is choose a business process. So if you're doing modeling without knowing the business process, I'm not sure how you're going to get past step one. So, <laughs> so that's the problem with, with uh, dimensional modeling. And I've seen people try and do it without knowing what's going on in the business. It's a shaky model at best. <laughs> but as a modeler, one of the things we need to know is, 20 minutes, thank you. Uh, we need to know the business entities that are involved, the relationships, common business terms and concepts. So you need to know what are the actors involved in the business processes. You need to know how are those actors related. Remember those shovel is related to the trucks. Trucks are related to load and dump locations, that kind of thing. And the common business terms, like spotting. If you've never heard it before and you saw the business process, now I get it. Okay. Now, a data modeler, well, we've got, from a data uh, project perspective, we're bringing data from other data sources, other applications. Those data models were for a different purpose. They were suited for the application. And I can guarantee you there's lots of data models out there that are terrible for analytics. So you got to keep in mind that we're not just grabbing the data, copy and pasting. We have to restructure it for our purpose. So as a data model, we have an opportunity to make a better business focused model. Okay. But a data model, we just generate structures, so the job of filling in those data structures goes down to data engineer. And a very oversimplified version of what a data engineer does, we transfer data from one data structure to another and apply some things in between. That's my little donuts in the top picture. So there's a little magic that happens. And one of the part of that magic is applying business logic. So we need in order to understand what that logic means, we need to know the business context. Because if you're a data engineer and you've been handed some rules, and you don't know that at this operation those rules don't apply, you might be inclined to just apply it across the board, and it wouldn't work so well. Um, the next part is about anybody who's doing coding, well, you have to test your work. So one of the things as a data engineer, you can do some pre preliminary tests to say this should happen, where this should never happen, and catch things early. Like before you send it off to quality assurance to get tested, you should be able to catch the glaring errors to make QA people work harder. Like give them the hard stuff to find. Okay? And at the worst, if you had zero business context, as a data engineer, you're pretty much doing a coding exercise. You're translating requirements into some code. 
but I think it would be more enjoyable if you had context because you're going to make, be able to make some choices in your code, make educated choices, and you're going to be able to have better conversations with the other people you need to get information from. But in general, for any data rule, understanding the business context is just going to help you understand the data and what you can and cannot do with it. It's going to permit critical independent thinking. By the way, we have a lot of smart people as data engineers and data modelers. Why don't we let them do some of their own thinking without just telling them what to do? It's going to improve communication between your roles and your team. This is going to create a foundation that everybody can work off of. And the fourth one is like a bit of a soft one, but I like to say it gives you purpose to the work. You know why you're doing the work, okay? which I think is going to help uh, do the work itself. So a better understanding, communication, and purpose Ultimately, you can lead to a better data platform within line with the goals of the organization. So just a quick recap. On its own, data is just an abstract representation of reality, but it needs context. The business processes are going to be, uh, provide the context in the organization, and this will lead to a better understanding for all people involved with data, and hopefully it's going to lead to a better data platform that's going to make you able to do more sound decisions. So I need to leave you with one lasting thought. You ready? Don't tell me. So what this cursor represents is just back to the beginning. Data comes from something in reality. But it's not a perfect representation of reality. Your data is a certain distance away from where it came from. So what I want to do is encourage you to get to know the business processes, get to know the context. So you can get more meaning out of your data, have better understanding. Use your data responsibly and achieve better results because now you'll know the reality of your data. Thank you. Thank you. As you've mentioned in your presentation quite frequently, most of these problems and then all of these data related roles have been surrounding business concepts. Could you provide an example that you have experienced or seen personally in any of those roles where um, business concepts provided such an error that led uh, the problems in this data, um, the data science processes that was, that was being, trying to be achieved? I was trying to be achieved. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, I was sorry. Oh, that was trying to be achieved. So, like, whatever um, the data science task was, um, wasn't achieved because of these problems. Uh, data science is, unfortunately, that's one of the roles I don't spend much time in. But I work with data science people. And one of the things that I noticed in working with these people is they, they have tried to do things with data and they didn't understand it. Um, like, back in the mining example, but just the whole cycle. There's a supporting business process that has to do with reporting the state of this trucks. Like, is the truck moving? Is it delayed for some reason? And all of that thing. And when they didn't know what the data meant, they had a hard time figuring out, like, if they were trying to use the data from an application, first of all. And so that the application model was terrible. So they were trying to interpret the data and were having a hard time. And I was there fortunately, to give them some guidance, like, this is the process that's happening, this is what this data point means, this is what that data point means. So it ended up, so they could eventually get their model, but it took some, some teaching to get them to understand what the data was coming in. So if I'm interpreting what you're saying, mainly all um, of this inconsistency and this business knowledge led to all these inefficiencies where you had to describe all of these individual um, processes that had to be uh, processed. Yeah, well, like if, if they already have the business process knowledge, they wouldn't even have to talk to them. Like I was the one who was basically informing them, here's what your data means, whereas if they already have the context, they would have done that interpretation themselves. Going once, twice, so. Hi. Yeah? That was going to be <laughs> So um, I have kind of a related question about the uh, the business kind of requirements that uh, analysts or even engineers might get from stakeholders, uh, whether they be like internal stakeholders or maybe external stakeholders, meaning clients. So sometimes they might have 
requirements, technical requirements that they uh, walk into the project having that might not necessarily make sense or um, just not <laughs> produce accurate uh, results or interpretable results. So I was wondering how would the data analysts go about dealing with uh, those requirements and if you've ever dealt with problems like that. Thank you. So if I, if I can interpret this, like as a data analyst, you've been given your requirements from a business analyst or who would this be from? Um, so like stakeholders, business stakeholders, managers, uh, executives, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah, well that, that's a big one because like depending on which level you're at, some people say, oh, I need this KPI, just get it for me. And they don't even tell you what made that KPI. Like a calculation could incorporate data from multiple business processes. Even. But you know, they just want that one number to, to show up on their dashboard. So yeah, that, that one, um, I've seen it where people are just throwing out KPIs and yeah, you'll get your number. But then when it comes time to interpreting that number and say, well, uh, we need to make this number better. How? <laughs> you got to crack it back open into its components and send it back to say, oh, well, it consists of this activity and this activity and this activity. So if you're just getting requirements where somebody just wants a number and unsatisfactory time trying to make sense of it, because like in the, in the model that I'm working with now, we have all kinds of KPIs that we're saying, well, we need to mine uh, the tonnage and the time metrics to, to generate something like that. If you don't know where the tonnage came from and the time metrics came from, where do you start? So, like, I'm just trying to play this in my head. If I was on the receiving end and somebody just says, give me this KPI, I, I'm kind of a, I don't know, a rogue kind of person sometimes, and I will say, uh, can you give me more information about this? so that I can make more sense of it, and maybe even get you a better result than what the one you're asking for. I don't know if that answers your question, but it's... Yeah, that's good, thanks. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, sorry. Yes, I should say the same. Um, building on the last question a bit more, at times I've experienced that it's difficult to convey the business context for someone that's in a data analyst position. So what are your suggestions when it comes to effectively communicating that context? What types of questions would you recommend posing as an analyst? And what types of experiences would you recommend having? Um, well, the questions I would say go back to the definition that I have for a business process. Can people answer these questions about what the activities are, what the value being generated, who's it for? Those are the simple ones. If they didn't give me that, we're on a good foundation now. Um, if, if you, I know I've seen data analysts who don't bother with this. They'll just do their thing and stuff comes out. Like, don't get me wrong, there's, it's not stopping everything, but uh, I think you would get a more rich analysis if you knew the context. And part of the reason for me doing this presentation is to get the word out there. Because even where I'm working now, the idea of business context and business process is not, it's not going throughout the organization. I have a mission. <laughs> but uh, I hope that answered your question. I think we're out of time. Uh, thank you very much for being here. When you